Hello everyone, today I'm going to be doing a code review of how I use social authentication to handle my React front-end and Django back-end web app. So let's get started. Um, a couple of videos ago, I've used the standard uh, Django all auth login system to log users in and out of the app. But since then, I've changed to use social authentication to log in users because this website caters to a specific audience, and that is Twitch.tv. Um, the goal for this website initially was to allow Twitch users to write exclamation mark tasks, and that'll bring up this website in which uh, they can view the tasks that the user has for their um, respective games and and this is for a specific game, but I'll just leave it general so that people can, you know, get an idea that it's just a basic CRUD app. Okay, so if you already don't know, um, oh, or if you already don't know, auth0.com has a diagram showing how they can use um, social logins to authenticate users and authorize them to make uh, get requests and post requests for their websites. And so I'm going to be following this flowchart to showcase my code. And so you guys can follow along to see uh, what my code looks like in each step of this entire diagram. And I'll leave a link in the description section if you guys want to check this website out to implement your own social logins for your websites. Um, again, still I'm using Django all auth and DJ rest auth for my backend authentication and authorization. And then I am using react and react router DOM for my front end. Okay. So let's get started. Um, I'm it's crucial that you follow this flow chart to properly set up your code base and get things working properly. The hardest thing for me was the lack of documentation DJ REST auth had for um, their social login. And there really wasn't anything in terms of supplemental uh, resources like Stack Overflow and GitHub and other things, but by following certain tutorials that are similar but very different from what I've done. I was able to kind of with trial and error figure things out. So over here the user's browser this is going to be your front end slash react. Your app with auth0 this is going to be your back end slash Django. And then your social provider it can be Google, GitHub, Twitter, Facebook, in this case, it's going to be for Twitch because it's the main tar target audience for uh, my website. So I'm going to be following this uh, flowchart, starting with number one. Users browser makes a GET request to the backend. And so in my login.js component, I have a link over here routing me to my backend. And then um, for my over here, as you can see, I have this button that if you see in the bottom left corner, it's the local host auth login. And so when I click on this, it uh, takes me to my backend and let me just show you what that backend code looks like. So go to URLs and go to auth slash login. This is going to be taking me to the built in all auth package uh, Twitch uh, views, and then um, it's the uh, OAuth2 login. And then if I go to the source code here, which these are all of the providers that you can use, by the way, for your login authentication. And if I go to the Twitch one and go to the views, uh, this OAuth2 login is the, the view that's being taken to. And then you can go ahead and see what this view does specifically on your own if you're interested. But what it's going to do is when I go to this one, 
um, it's going to take me to it's going to redirect me to the social provider for login so let's see I'm going to do a so I'm going to click in with the link and the link is going to take me to the back end and okay well first of all show you guys what it does exactly is I'm going to I'm using the debug toolbar for Django and I'm going to insert intercept the redirects to show you guys what, exactly what it's doing and so go back log out okay now I'm going to click login and it's going to be taking me to that view and the view is going to redirect me as it shows over here on number two um, to this link over here and that is the twitch.tv slash oauth2 slash authorize and then you have to have your client ID set up which you haven't already you can do in admin but I personally like doing it in the settings so if I go down here the social account providers you have to set this up um, read the Django all auth documentation to set your social account and for me I'm using twitch so I capture the client ID, which is passed down over here to um, specify which app that I'm using. And if I go to applications, this is the one that I'm using. Um, and so what this one does is, so it's going to redirect me to the uh, social provider. And then the social provider, uh, let me go to incognito so that I don't auto log in. So it's going to take me here. And then I log in with my credentials. And when I log in, it's going to be taking me to another view called callback. And you specify the callback with the redirect URL over here. And so this is mine so, and then let me go to the URLs over here and once I log in with the right credentials it's going to be taking me to auth slash login slash callback and over here it, it is and then that is the view twitch callback so if I go to this one um, this is the function or the view that it takes me to and it returns um, it redirects me to this view with an access code. So right over here, um, and what it's doing over here is this local host 3000, and that's because this view is redirecting me to the 3000 with the with this code that I've just received back. So Twitch is sending me to this view, and this view gets back all of this. So the code equals blah, 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 blah. The scope, um, and the scope is I'm getting back the username and the email. I'm not getting back like password or anything like that. And then the state, which is kind of like CSR of tokens. Um, you don't have to worry about that. But this code that you get back, this one is the one that you're interested in. So the back end redirects me to the front end with this whole string. And once I do, this component called twitch login.js over here is going to capture that. So uh, just to make the variables consistent and easy to be familiar with, this params over here that I've captured the code with um, is going to be the same thing that I use for my params over here. And so the constant access code equals params. And then I capture the params using location. And I slice out just a code that I want into a variable called code params. And uh, I use the code to plug back into my backend. So 
over here. It's this redirect uh, to my user, and then I've redirected it over here. And then I'm making a post request. I'm not exactly sure why the website says get requests for these because when I make a post request to Twitch slash connect, and then if I go to uh, Twitch slash connect to this view over here, and then the view is called Twitch connect, go to the views, it's, it's taking me to this website, or not website, this view over here, which if I show you guys um, Twitch connect, I have the options of post request. So I'm not exactly sure why they, they're saying get request in that, but you get the code back um, and you plug in this code. So let me just take this code over here that I got back or over here. And so I'm just manually doing what um, I'm going to be doing via react slash front end. So if I do a post request with the access code, what this view is going to do is it's going to plug that back into Twitch saying, hi, I've received an okay, good to go uh, from the user. And then the user has generated an access code for me to, for me to use for authentication slash API calls. Go to post request. I get back a key and this key is generated by the backend and now I can start using this key to make API calls between front end and my back end. So the social provider is, it's done its work. Now all I need to worry about is um, front end back end. So um, the user sends the access code to the back end, the back end sends that to the social provider, which is Twitch. And the response is an okay and the back end I'm using uh, yeah number five I get the access token back and then it, re it returns a key in the in my code base I get that key back I store it inside local storage as well as set it in my state for me to use later on because I don't want to have to keep going back to my local storage if I don't need to. And so I can also rely on the React state to hold my token. And so if I post this, then I mean, okay, well, I already got the key back, so I can't use that anymore, but um, let's try it one more time here. So log in, go to my backend, my backend, this is my backend. Um, back in will go to the Twitch. I will log in, get a successful login, um, get the code back. And this code will go back to my front end. My front end will use this code back to my back end, which will go to uh, the Twitch again, get back the key, and then I'm logged in. It's a very long, tedious process, but it's doing that for security reasons. And that's why I think um, social logins are very powerful and quite effective in um, authentication, especially when it comes to making um, the user interface efficient. Because if I wanna log in with my own website's user and password, um, it's it can get quite tedious for users who may not keep track of them um, and they might have to do a password reset or a username reset you know how they i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have instances where um, you forgot your username or password after not using the website in a long time so you guys don't need to worry about that anymore because if you're an avid twitch user you can just for me like over here i don't even need to type in my Twitch uh, credentials, I can just click and everything does it for me because my browser already has Twitch credentials saved in its own stuff. So I don't even have to worry about that. And so instead of worrying about two accounts, you only need to worry about one. And anyway, uh, just to show you guys how I capture this params is if I go to my app.js, 
um, and go to my, I believe it's this one over here, this route that I'm showing you guys, this component. Um, I basically passed the params as props and let's see how I got that. Mm. Okay. So over here, I'm making a URL with the params. So this code over here is, um, where is it? In my views. It's basically this params over here. So if, if I do twitch slash params in my uh, app.js, it's twitch slash, this is the params. Um, I can write params here, but I just, for the simplicity of it, I just kept the code and um, the props equal whatever this is, I guess. And so I pass that as params. And if I go to the Twitch login component, I have the params over here. And then I slice it to capture the access code. And I put that into um, this constant for me to use into a post request. So yeah, I'm just showing you guys how I did it if you want to copy what I did. And then after I store everything into its proper place, I just do a history.push into the homepage and then I can start making um, requests. So if I go to my tasks, because I'm authenticator right now, I can make post requests. I can delete. Um, I can complete and do all that. And if I and then uh, I also put in conditions over here to make sure that I can't edit other people's uh, tasks and they can't edit mine. And I did that by first making sure that there's a token if you want to edit, um, and I got to make sure that the authenticated user is the same as the uh, profile that you're trying to view. So if I do have this one, I can't really do anything either. But if it matches, then I can do it. So yeah. Um, one thing, the reason why I put the token in and the auth user, blah, blah, blah. So I did think about this because it, uh, People can change their tokens and their um, auth usernames because if you go to the uh, components over here, if I go to app, I have my state as tuna hobby and this state is the auth user. I decided that um, for whatever reason they want to change everything over here and try to like hack their way into editing other people's stuff. I figure that the um, they would just get an error. So if they ever try to change this, they will get a four one error or a or a four three. So I'm not too worried about that. Maybe that is something that we need to consider when we factor later on. But for now, everything is functional. So yeah, that's pretty much it. This took a really long time for me to learn. So I'm happy to show you guys that it is functional and it does work. Um, and so if you guys have any questions on how to implement this yourself, then I just show you guys how to do that. But if you have any other further questions, feel free to leave a comment below and perhaps I can be of help to you. So I will catch you guys next time. Goodbye.